What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I want to talk about something that I have not been able to talk about for about almost two years now, and that's travel. So before everything happened back in 2020, uh, right before that, I took a trip. I got back. I, I left in February. I got back in like mid-March. So when I got back, that's when things really took off. And I have not traveled since then. Okay. And one of the, I, I have people who watched my channel prior to that, that last trip. And they liked the content that I was putting out about travel credit cards. And I've always said I was going to come back to that. And I am. And I will be talking about a travel credit card today. Now, I probably will be talking about at least one credit card a week. That's pretty much the way that I'm going to do it right now. Even before before I start talking about the, the financial news that I'm talking about now, I was talking about travel credit cards maybe twice a week. So we'll have at least once a week. We're going to review a new card and I'm getting back to traveling. That's basically what I'm here to say today. So I, I'm really excited February will be my first trip. I'll be going back to Columbia, going there for Carnival. I do have another channel. I have not posted on that channel in a, in a while, but that's going to be my travel channel. So anytime that I'm that I leave, uh, I won't even say leave the country. Anytime I travel, period, I'm going to be on that channel. And so I will give you more information as it gets closer to to my trip. Uh, but I'm excited to go to Carnival and share that with you guys. Uh, so on this channel, I'll still be putting out content. I might not be putting out daily content if I'm if I'm traveling, but you'll see if I'm not putting out a, a content on this channel, it's going to be on the other channel. So just uh, stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead. I want to take a look at this this travel credit card. And so for those of you who really enjoy watching the travel credit cards and and learning more about those, uh, this this will be the video for you. So. Capital One Venture X card. Now I know this card's been out for a little bit. I think it's been at least a, at least a month. And uh, most of the big YouTubers that talk about travel credit cards has already uh, weighed in on this card. Uh, I think it's a good card. I've been looking at the card, and I might, I might. Let me let me come back to the screen. I might end up getting this card. This might be one card for me. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because it does have some things that I'm really interested in. And it's been a while since I've gotten a credit card. It's been over two years. And my my whole thought was I wanted to purchase a house before I started getting back into getting credit cards. Because if you guys don't know, uh, when you start getting travel credit cards, you can get a lot. And right now I have probably about eight credit cards, but I'm probably gonna get a couple more, two, maybe three more cards. So you have people that are 15 credit cards, 20 credit cards, easy. And they're all travel credit cards. And I'm gonna explain to you the reason why this is beneficial and not just for people who travel, but this could be beneficial for anyone and you don't have to spend any extra money. That's the big thing here. And that's what people, I, I, I think they don't understand. You don't have to spend any different. You spend the same way that you're spending now. The only difference is you're using your credit card instead of your debit card and you're paying it off every month. Okay, let's get back to this card here. So this is a VentureX card. Now this is this card is not for everyone. I will say that uh, right from the start, uh, not everyone will be able to get the benefits that this card has to offer. But I will tell you that if you if you are looking for a travel credit card, this is definitely one that that's a that's a good card to look at. Okay, so Venture X. What I like to always do is look at their marketing, look at what they're trying to say here. Obviously, you see this uh, young lady; she's out in this area, and I don't even recognize it. So I would imagine it's probably not the U.S but this is a venture card, so you need to venture out is basically what I'm getting from uh, from this picture here. Okay, so let's go ahead, and in the top here, just the title too, just look at that, introducing a new class of Capital One travel rewards. A new class, right? So they're building this card, uh, they're showing this card as as a, a step above the other cards that that are out there that Capital One offers. Okay, so the first thing that I like to look at is what are we getting when it comes to bonus? So you're getting 100,000 bonus miles, okay? Now, don't stop right here because I know you're gonna look at this and you're gonna say, this is what? I have to spend all this money in order to get this 100,000 miles? You have to think about it this way. So you're gonna earn 100,000 bonus miles once you spend $10,000 on purchases within the first six months, okay? This is the key here, the first six months. And so the reason why this 
it, it might seem crazy, but it's it's attainable is because you have to think about it. this is over a six month period. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to to these these cards, I spend at least two thousand dollars a month just on things. Right. When it comes to my bills and all the things that I that I purchase every month, it's it's over two thousand dollars. So if I'm using this credit card and only this credit card and I'm not using my debit card and then at the end of every month I'm paying off this credit card in full, I can easily hit that $10,000. It'll take me five months to do it. And then I will get that bonus. And so you have to look at your spending habits. And this is why I said this card is not for everyone. But if you are in that situation where you say, yeah, you know what? I spend $2,000, at least $2,000 a month. Well, then this makes sense. So let's go ahead and go back over here now. So that's the first thing you get the hundred thousand bonus miles. And I know you're asking yourself, well, hundred thousand bonus miles. What does that mean in, in, in real people talk like hundred thousand bonus miles means nothing to me. What can I do with that? So to, to look at it bare bones. Okay. The, the, the worst case scenario with a hundred thousand miles, you can transfer that in for a thousand dollars. Okay. That's worst case scenario. Now, if I'm using transfer partners, I can get a lot better. So if I'm transferring this directly to airlines, transferring it directly to hotels, I can get 2000 or $3,000 worth of value by doing that. So you can get even more. And then if you're looking at just traveling, let's say I want to take a flight somewhere. It's an economy ticket. It's about 25,000 points. And that is what you will be spending. Okay? Points and miles are the same thing. So 25,000 points, that's what I would use for a round trip ticket anywhere in the US with the exception of Hawaii. So that's kind of the way that you can look at it for an economy seat. What I like to do, what I like to do, I like to use it for business class, first class. That's what I use my points for. Now it's gonna be more, obviously you're gonna use more points, probably double, maybe even three times as much. You might spend 75,000 points for a round trip business class seat. But for me, it's worth it. It's worth it to fly business class or first class I, I, I used to fly economy all the time, but now that I've kind of, you know, I gotten out there and start uh, flying business class, uh, I'm hooked. I'm hooked because you get lounge access. You get a lot of other things just by flying business class that you won't get if you fly economy. In some, some cases, even if you're, you're, you're paying cash, it's not that much more. You might be paying 200 or $300 extra to fly a business class seat and you get the, the lounge access and you get meals sometimes on the economy flight we flew to hawaii um actually i did take a trip i did take a trip i forgot about hawaii i did take that trip uh in in 2021 but when we flew to hawaii that that was a situation where my my i flew with my family and my parents they didn't want to fly business class they don't have points and they didn't want to pay that extra money and so they flew economy and they didn't get a meal I flew business class and I got a meal. And so you're paying, and now I know the meal's not worth 200. I think my ticket was probably about 300 extra dollars. It's not worth 300 extra dollars, but you do have some other benefits when you fly a business class. Okay, let's go back over here and look at some of this other stuff here. Now, this is another thing that I like that caught my eye here. You're gonna get 10,000 miles and that's anniversary bonus. So every year, your anniversary year, you're gonna get 10,000 miles, so that's good. So it's one of those things where once you have the card, and what, what I like to look at when it comes to these cards, I want keeper cards. I don't wanna get a card that I'm going to uh, just get for the sign up bonus and then have to downgrade the card at a later date or cancel the card. You never wanna cancel credit cards because that establishes your credit. And so when you start canceling cards, then now you're, 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 uh, you're messing with your credit. And I don't wanna do that. So once I open up an account, I wanna have that account open for as long as I possibly can. So you get the 10,000 miles, so that makes sense to me, and they're, they're giving this uh, an equivalency of $100, okay? $100 towards travel is what they say. And so, and if you're using it for the transfer partners, if I'm transferring this directly to airlines, guess what? I'm gonna get even more value out of that. So it's gonna be even more than $100. Okay, and in the future, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how you can make this all happen. I know I'm talking with, to you guys about transfer partners and all this stuff, and you're thinking, what what is he talking about? But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about, we'll get more in depth about how to make this happen. 
Okay, some other things that I like on this card, $300 annual travel credit. These are always good, so you can get this travel credit. Now, the only thing is you have to use this Capital One travel portal. When it comes to travel portals, I generally do not use travel portals, but if I'm getting a $300 credit, obviously I'm gonna use their, their travel portal. So every year I can go and I can use this travel portal and uh, use it $300 worth of, of value. And what you need to look at when it comes to these cards, what you need to be focused on, because I'm gonna show you the annual fee. If you haven't seen that annual fee already, I'm gonna show you that annual fee. And you're probably gonna say, this is a, no, I'm not getting this card. This is crazy. I wouldn't pay that much annually for a credit card. I wouldn't pay anything for a credit card, but I'm gonna show you how it makes sense and why it makes sense. So the $300 travel credit, what I look for when it comes to that, when it comes to a credit card, is this something that I can do every year? Like, am, am I gonna travel at least once per year? Can I make use of this travel credit? And in this situation and in, in many situations, unless we're looking at kind of the things that have happened over the last couple of years, which we hope that we're past that and we're moving forward and we're not gonna have these issues anymore. But for the most part, I'm gonna travel at least once every year. And because I'm gonna travel at least once every year, I'm gonna use that travel credit. and. Just think of any trip that you take. Even if I'm, I live in Southern California and I wanna go up to Las Vegas, I'm gonna spend at least $300 to, for that trip. Whether it be hotel, airfare, I'm gonna spend that money. And so because of that, I can use this travel credit every year. So that's one thing that you need to focus on. Now, another thing that they have here is they have this $200 credit for vacation rental, it's a vacation rental credit. Now this is limited time offer and it looks like it's only for the first year. So that's, you're only gonna be able to use it once. Uh, it's, it's nice, it's nice to have that, but this is not something that I'm really factoring in when it comes to deciding if I wanna get this card or not. Okay, now let's move down to, oh wow, why would I get this card? The annual fee is $395. Now I know you're saying to yourself, there's no way in the world I'm paying $395 for a credit card. This is why it makes sense. So the $395, let's put a highlight on that. I think we could put highlights. There we go. This is why it makes sense. You get a $300 travel credit. Now you have to look at it and you have to realize, am I gonna be able to travel at least once per year? If I can, I can get that $300 uh, credit there. And the next thing that I look at I don't, I never look at the, the, the bonus miles because this is, this is a one-time thing, okay? Although it's good, it's only a one-time thing. So what I like to look at is what am I gonna get every year? And if I get 10,000 miles every year, that's, the value is $100 and the travel credit, $300, that's $400 of value that I'm getting on this card every year. So if I get $400 of value on this card every year, guess what? That makes this $395 annual fee, it, it's a break even. I'm getting the value out of the card, okay? So that's how I look at it and that's how I break this down. Now, if you wanna go in addition, okay, yeah, I get 100,000 bonus miles, that's gonna help me for the first probably couple of years with the card and so that's gonna make it make sense as well, but longevity, Five years down the road, 10 years down the road, as long as I'm getting these same two credits, it's gonna pay for this card. So even though it's a $395 annual fee, it still makes sense. So hopefully that, hopefully you guys understand that. I never look at this. I never look at this, okay? This means nothing to me. And the reason that it means nothing to me is every month I'm paying this card off in full. I'm never carrying a balance. Therefore, I'm never paying any interest, okay? That is the important thing when it comes to credit cards. Do not pay interest ever. Okay, credit level, you need to have excellent credit. And generally when it comes to these cards, you're gonna have to have excellent credit. That's just the way things go. And uh, when I say excellent credit, we're talking high sevens. Um, that, that's pretty much what they're looking at. Okay, now let's look at some of the earned possibilities with these cards because this is, this is what, this is the reason why you're using your credit card over your debit card. The reason why you're using these credit cards instead of debit cards is because you're earning points every time you use that card. So uh, you're getting 10X here. 
So 10 points for every dollar spent. And I know I say points a lot, points, miles, they're the same thing, okay? So if I say points and it says miles on here, just understand that they, they mean the same thing. So you get 10 points for every dollar spent and that will be uh, on hotels and rental cars. And this is booked on uh, the Capital One Travel Portal, okay? So they're really pushing you to use their portal. So just make sure you understand that you're gonna be probably on their portal booking a lot of things. Uh, I personally, I personally like to just go directly with, with if I'm if I'm staying at a hotel, I like to book directly with the hotel. If I'm staying, if I'm uh, flying somewhere uh, on a different on an airline, I like to book directly with the airline. Uh, but you do have these options here to earn extra points. They're really pushing you to use this Capital One a travel portal, and I want to look at it. I want to see what what it has to offer because sometimes when you do book directly, especially when it comes to airfare. You might have some blackout dates or you might have a situation where you can't book a flight because they they don't have any available reward seats. And so that you, you'll run into that sometimes. OK, so five X here. So you get five points for every dollar spent and that, that's booked through Capital One Travel. So this is on flights and then you get two points for it. Now, this is important. Two points for every dollar spent on all purchases every day. This is big because you'll have there's certain cards, certain cards that you'll get. They'll give you some high bonuses, five points for every dollar spent here, three points for every dollar spent there, and then one point for every dollar spent on all spend, uh, all other spend, I should say. So if it falls into a category where you don't have, you don't get those specialty five points for every dollar spent or three points for every dollar spent, then you're only getting one point for every dollar spent. So it's nice to have a card where you don't even need to think about it. If I'm using the card, I know I'm getting two points for every dollar spent. All right. Let's go ahead and go back here. Uh, some other things that I like. Now, looking at this, the, they're really selling this this uh, Capital One uh, travel portal. I, I do need to check it out uh, because they're, they're really pushing this and they even have a situation here where they'll show you, uh, you can pretty much put your information in there and they'll show you if the flights are, uh, they'll notify you when the uh, price drops on flights and, and, and stuff like that. So that that's really good. They're selling this. And I think that's a real good thing. Uh, book confidently, uh, free price drop protection, a lot of different things that they're offering here. Uh, find a better price, will match it. So they're they're really they're guaranteeing you the lowest rates, and so that's good. Uh, so really giving you some 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 good benefits there with this this uh, Capital One travel. So like I said, I, I want to. I want to look at it and see the main reason that I don't tend to use the travel portals is I like dealing directly because then if I need to cancel something or I need to make changes, it's easy. When you start dealing with third parties, that's when you start running into some problems where I might call my airline. I book, I book through a third party, then I'll call the airline and I want to make a change and they tell me, oh, you need to go to the third party and then go through them. So that's why I like generally going directly with the airline and directly with the hotel because I can make those changes uh, with them because I book through them. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of the other perks here. Now, this is this is a game changer for, for a lot of people. It was a game changer for me because I didn't even really know anything about lounges, airport lounges. I knew they existed. I thought it was only for rich people and I, didn't, I never saw them at the airport because usually they're off in different areas or kind of hidden. If you're if you don't if you're not looking for them, you're not going to find them. But once you get you start getting some of these travel credit cards, you have access to these lounges, which is which is pretty amazing. And if you're flying, if you're flying business class, first class, you automatically get access uh, to lounges uh, to, on that flight. So if I'm flying a business class uh, seat, then I will have access to a lounge even without the travel credit card. But uh, Capital One, they're going to be opening up lounges. So this will be interesting here. We'll have to see how this this all plays out. Uh, so you'll have access to, if you have this credit card, you're going to have access to their lounges. Now, priority pass. This is something that I use all the time. I have a Chase Sapphire Reserve and it gives me priority pass lounge access. So I use this all the time. Okay. So uh, when it comes down to the, the lounges, they have uh, how many lounges they have access to 1300 plus participating VIP lounges. Uh, and more 600 cities they're they're all over priority pass lounges are everywhere now they're not i will say they're not the nicest lounges that you'll ever visit but they have the basic amenities okay you'll have snacks you'll have drinks uh you'll have alcohol you'll have coffee you'll have other beverages and so it's it's good enough and 
you might run into some lounges that are really nice that are a part of Priority Pass. And there's nothing like, when I fly generally, I like, let's say it's a long flight, I'm flying a five hour flight and then I have a layover and then I have to fly, um, you know, get on another plane, especially when I went to Thailand. I mean, that's like a 10 hour flight. And the beauty of, of, of going into a lounge, especially if the lounge has a shower, I can't tell you how good it feels when you're on a plane for five or six hours or 10 hours in the situation when I flew to Thailand and actually flew to uh, China first and then from China, then we flew to Thailand. It feels great to get off that plane, go to a lounge and take a shower. That might sound crazy, but it feels good. And it just relaxes you and you get back on the plane. And, and from that point, I think it was like a two and a half hour flight from China to Thailand. And it's just, I mean, I, I can't explain it, but when you have these travel credit cards, you have access to these lounges and you don't have to pay anything extra uh, for for the access. So I think it's just something that you should consider. Uh, I mean, one of the things that you should think about when you're looking at getting these travel credit cards, uh, just think, you know what, if I get certain cards, I'll have lounge access. And that is a, is a game changer. Okay, something else here uh, to, to mention here, global entry, TSA pre-check. This is something that I recommend everyone who travels get global entry. Don't get TSA pre-check, get global entry. Because if you get global entry, you're going to get global entry and TSA pre-check. Now you're going to get a hundred dollar credit with this credit card. So if I use this credit card to get global entry and global entry is a hundred dollars, I don't have to pay anything. And I get both global entry and TSA pre-check. TSA pre-check is for within the state. So if I'm flying in the U S from uh, let's say from California to uh, to New York, then I can use TSA pre-check. You go through a separate line when you're going through the checkpoint. Okay, you're going through a separate line. You don't have to take your shoes off. You don't have to take your computers out of your bags and all that stuff. You just walk right through. Okay, they do a pre-screening on you, and so you, it's an application that you fill out. They do the pre-screening, so they kind of know who you are, and and uh, they do a background check on you and all that. So. That's what TSA PreCheck is. Now, when it comes to global entry, global entry is when you're outside of the US, okay? So when you're coming back into the US, you can use global entry. And with global entry, you go through a separate line when you're leaving the US, but when you come back, you go through another separate line, you go through separate customs, and then you'll go to a kiosk, like I fly into LAX, and when I fly into LAX, they send me to this kiosk, I put in my information, it takes like three minutes, it takes a picture of me while I'm putting that information in, uh, they, your fingerprints, you put your fingerprints on there. They'll spit out this little ticket. And then you take this ticket over to the customs agent and then you're done. That's it. Then you go to your ba the baggage claim. The only problem with global entry and TSA pre-check is that you get through so fast that your bags aren't there. And so you still have to wait. And so that's, that's a little frustrating because I usually get to the turnstile. I'm the first one there and I'm just standing there waiting for everyone else to catch up to me because the bags haven't come out yet. Uh, so that's that's one thing that when it comes down to to global entry, that's the only thing that I'm like, ah, I wish they had a better way where global entry people could get their bags first. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm asking for too much. Uh, but so let's just move on down here. So some of the other benefits here, I'm not going to go through everything here. No foreign transaction fees. This is the stuff that really sticks out to me, because uh, when you're traveling abroad, uh, you want to make sure you're not using cards that have transaction fees. Okay. So and that's one of the reasons why you want to use a credit card and not use a debit card when you travel, because you don't want to have to pay any extra fees. Uh, miles don't expire and you, no blackout date. So that's good. Uh, what are some other things? Cell phone protection. This is something that's always good. Uh, if you're using this card to pay for your cell phone bill, then you have this, the cell phone protection. So those are, those are good benefits. Uh, free additional card holders. Okay. So this is good. Now you can say you have uh, your family member, you want to give them a card as well. You can give them a card or get them a card and they can use some of the same benefits, the lounge access, they can use that as well. So that's something that's really, really good. Something to think about a uh, referral bonus. And so if you get other people to sign up for this card, this is amazing here. And I don't know exactly how this is going to work. It's probably maybe 25,000 points for each person that signs up. It says up to, which means that maybe a, it, it, within a year, if you can get different people to sign up for the card, uh, then you'll get up to a hundred thousand, uh, bonus, uh, miles. 
So something good to look at there. Hertz uh, president circle status. I don't really rent cars, so I that's not something that's really appealing to me. But when you're looking at this card, I mean, there are a lot of good things about it. The only thing you have to get past that $395 annual fee, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm gonna tell you that I have eight credit cards. They all have annual fees. I have one credit card, the annual fee is $550. So when it comes down to it, as long as I'm getting that value out of that credit card, I'm gonna continue to have that credit card because it makes sense. It makes sense. You're getting the credits. As long as you're able to use those credits, then you're fine. And like I said, when it came to travel, I travel at least once per year. I did go to Hawaii this year and I did use uh, some of my points uh, for, for that trip and I use my travel credit because on that card that I have, it's a $300 travel credit on that one as well. Uh, so just something to think about when it comes to these travel credit cards, something you should be looking into. Now, it's, you don't just have travel credit cards, you also have cash back cards. So let's say you don't travel, you can use the cash back cards the same way. You don't have to use them for travel, but you can use them for money. You can get money out of them. So if I use that card for everyday spend, then at some point, if I wanna cash those points out, I can cash those points out and get some, some cash in my pocket just for using the card, okay? The main key here, you pay it off every month. If you're not paying it off every month, if you're not good with credit cards, the credit cards are not for you, okay? If you can't pay it off every month, they're not for you. I'll tell you that right now because that's how you, you get you get in that death spiral where you, you stop paying and you say, oh, I'll just pay the minimum, I'll just pay the minimum, and before you know it, you're paying all this money to these credit card companies, and that's not what you wanna do. You want to get the most value out of the credit cards and not have to pay any interest on the credit cards. So if you guys have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.